Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to look at how to create a mechanism for rotation of the door and the door hinge. So let's get started. So for the purpose of demonstration, I have this uh, dummy enclosure here. This has an outer body and a door, then you have two hinges that support the door. So first thing we need to do here is, I will open one of these hinge assemblies. So this hinge assembly has three components. One is the fixed hinge here, which is going to get attached to the enclosure, and then the pin, then hinge number two. So pin here is an optional component. So in case if you want the pin to be present in your mechanism, you can, or else if you don't want, you can ignore it because pin is going to stay stationary relative to the rotation of the hinge. So you can choose to add it to your mechanism or not, it's up to your choice. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to have this pin in my mechanism here. So, so inside this uh, hinge assembly, first I have this fixed hinge as I said. So if you look at the fixed hinge, it is placed in its uh, default coordinate system aligned to all the XYZ planes. And then I have the pin. So one thing you should keep in mind here is that every time you perform motion analysis or mechanism, you should make sure that there should be one stationary body and every other body should be related to that stationary body. Okay, so the pin here, if you look at it, it is connected entirely to this uh, fixed body alone and it is not referenced to any other plane here. So, if you look at the third component here, this is the crucial one. So, if you look at this one, I have created two features which are uh, for aesthetic purpose only. They represent the bolt at the higher level or the pin. So, I will hide these momentarily. So if you click on this uh, movable hinge here and uh, click on edit definition, right now it is not having mechanism connection. What do I mean by that? So you have two types of uh, connections in Creo. One is the static connections where it is arrested in all degrees of freedom. So you have uh, coincidence or displacement connections or angle offsets just controls the part in every direction and makes it stationary. But mechanism connections allow two or three uh, degrees of freedom in any of the directions uh, that is uh, depending on your uh, uh, mechanism intent. So here, the hinge here uh, is having a coincident constraint with the axis of the hinge and the axis of this fixed plate here. And then uh, next coincident will be the surface to surface connection. <coughs> so we, since we have, the, since we have <coughs> a surface cut here on the fixed hinge, so we have mated the uh, interfacing surface with that one and then we have an angle offset of 90 degree. Now I'm going to delete this angle offset. So when I do that, the mechanism <coughs> connections will be enabled. So if I have the angle offset here, it means that the part is completely fixed and it's not movable. If I delete this angle offset, I get this option enabled. So I click on it so that my axis alignment is set, my translation is set so that uh, my hinge is not going to move back and forth within this axis here. <coughs> and this, this is the crucial part. So if I click on rotational axis, I have to select two <coughs> surfaces or two features between the fixed body and the movable body so that it controls the angle of rotation. So for simplicity, I'm going to choose this surface <coughs> and this surface and the current angle here is minus 90 degree. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to set this as a zero position so that every time I regenerate the model, I get the closed position of the door. So I click on this current position, hit zero, set as zero position, and I will also enable regeneration value. So if you regenerate it, it will uh, uh, come, come, it will come back to its original state. So if I click on zero, what happens is this hinge is getting flattened. So I am going to rotate this hinge to about minus 90 degree and set as my zero position. So you need to rotate your hinge to a particular value that is based on your closed or open position and then hit on set zero position. So I'll set my minimum limit and maximum limit. So I'll rotate my hinge in this direction to know whether my angle is going in negative or positive direction. So here you can see my angle is going in positive direction. So I'm going to click on zero again and then my minimum value should be zero and my maximum value should be 90. So the reason why I have set my maximum value to 90 is because if I try to rotate it again, it won't go beyond 90 degrees as you see and it won't go less than zero degrees. So that's what it's doing. We are controlling the limits of angle in the rotation. So I'll click on OK. Uh, to check whether the mechanism is working or not, 
you can click on drag components and left click you don't have to hold it you just have to like left click and let it go and the model will rotate so my model is rotating in the way i should uh, i have expected it uh, to work so 90 0 90 0 90 0 so my model is within my limits okay okay so i'll reset it my model in order to place it an exact zero in case if you have dragged it and left let it go in in some middle position between 0 and 90 what you can do you can regenerate the model so that it comes back to its original position so i'll save this one close out of this so now i am back to my original assembly in this assembly here the way you constrain the hinges plays a crucial role for the mechanism for a moment i'll hide the door here as you can see in the model tree i have a pattern of these two hinge assemblies i'll go to edit definition of one of these hinge assemblies so here the way i constrain the hinge assembly with the enclosure is using only one component that is the static component so never use your movable hinge to constrain with the outer body so what will happen is if you constrain using this movable hinge with the rest of the body it won't allow your hinge to rotate here for an example i have used distant constraint between the top of this enclosure and the fixed hinge another distance constraint between this flat surface of the fixed hinge and the enclosure then the last thing would be to arrest the flat surface or the mating surface of the hinge and the enclosure so only use your fixed components to assemble it to your uh, top level never use your movable hinge so this is the crucial part i'll exit out of this one and if you look here i have a pattern of uh, two hinges since i have top and uh, bottom hinges i'll enable the door now we will look at how to assemble the door with the rest of the assembly here uh, the thing you should keep in mind is that uh, if if you assemble the door in a <coughs> in a improper fashion it won't come along with the mechanism you are trying to simulate so what do i mean by that so you should assemble the door in a way that it is coincident with both of the hinges in case if you make the door coincident with only one of the hinges during your mechanism only one of your hinges will rotate and the other one will not rotate so for that purpose my first connection will be this coincident between the top bolt holes of the top hinge and the door and then my second coincident will be the surface to surface the third coincident will be bottom hole to this bolt hole on the door i hope you got the connections well so in case if you didn't understand you can just replay this uh, section again to understand i'm clicking on okay now you can see there is a small uh, box and a small and and, uh, and the symbol it's called a glyph in creo so the reason why we are seeing glyph is because uh, it is trying to communicate the creo is trying to communicate to us that this part is not constrained in all degrees of freedom so if you click on drag components again click on the door it will open the door here and the limits are set by hinges so that you don't have to worry about setting the angle for the door again since we have 0 to 90 limit set on hinges it don't allow your door to rotate more than that you could just see so now that we have created mechanism connections it is time for us to create our initial condition to run our analysis so what do i mean by initial conditions so for any type of analysis especially motion analysis there is something called initial state where your body has to start from say for example if i try to open my door of uh, of a closet or if i try to open door of any cupboard it has to stay in the closed position for it to open right so we cannot open something which is already open so simple as that so i am going to drag components again and there is an option called snapshots in case if it is collapsed in your uh, uh, options you can just press your, this arrow here it will take you to the snapshot there is an option called uh, camera it takes a snapshot click on this and i am going to name it as door underscore closed so this is my first initial condition and i'm going to click on enter so if you enter it the door underscore close name will be assigned to that snapshot here so this is my initial condition so if i click on drag components and i keep it at a partial state here click okay and then uh, if you go to drag components again and double click the door closed condition it will take you back to your initial condition you can do it either way if you have the door set at partial rotation you could regenerate the model and close it if you could remember from the enable regenerate option we checked in during our hinge mechanism connection it does the same job here as well or else if you do not have the enable regeneration value set there you could just go to drag components and double click on the door close condition so that it will come back to its original state now we are going to go to applications tab and mechanism connection here so 
you can see since we use mechanism mode to create this assembly within the hinge it is automatically detecting two motors here since we are having two different uh, hinges i'm sorry two hinges which are similar <coughs> Uh, we are uh, creo is uh, automatically detecting these two access feature which we can use for uh, motion analysis and assign motors as well so this is the mechanism tree which you are seeing here uh, you have a lot of connections like you have joints cams 3d contacts gears but we are not going to make use of any of those we're just going to use motors for this video so i'm going to click on uh, motors drop down if you hit servo there is a yellow star option here which will take us to the new entity so if you want don't want to do that you could just directly go to this servo motors option on top it will ask you to select a drive driven entity so i'm going to select this top hinge here so the direction is pretty simple so if you look down from the top towards the direction where the arrow is pointing it is clockwise direction so if i'm looking down from here my door has to rotate this way like clockwise so my direction is correct as mentioned in the world here it looks like a tornado it represents in which direction the door is going to rotate so <clears throat> instead of angular position i am going to select angular velocity and if i go to profile details it will give me a unit of degrees per second since we are going to open it 90 degrees you should make sure that the time which we are going to use for this mechanism that is the seconds that it takes to open the door and the total rotation in degrees should match each other or should be proportionate so what do i mean by that say for example my door is going to open 90 degrees and i want to have an animation for 3 seconds so you have to divide 90 degrees by 3 seconds and add the coefficient here so my degrees per second would be 30 degrees per second because 90 divided by 3 is 30 if you want to look at the graph so it's a straight line graph because we do not have any uh, acceleration or deceleration it's a constant velocity constant angular velocity so we have set our value of 30 degrees per second on the coefficient and i'm going to click ok so our motor is ready right now now there is an option called mechanism analysis so we have to click on mechanism analysis I'm going to define a name for hinge rotation 001 an index something like that so the position you should, you should select kinematic start time should be zero length and rate should be enabled here on the drop down and my end time should be three seconds so we since we are running our analysis for only three seconds so i'm selecting zero to three and my frames per second should be anything close to 30 so it will give us a smooth input sorry smooth output so here Earlier we were discussing about initial conditions, right? So here I have initial configuration setting. You can use either this as your close position, whichever is displaying on the screen, or you can choose a snapshot. So if you could remember the snapshot option we used to create an initial condition, that is the close position of the door. So that is useful here. Say for example, if you have rotated your door and it is not in its initial condition, you could just go to this mechanism drop down tree where we designed, uh, sorry, where we defined our analysis definition you click on edit definition if you go to snapshot and door close you could click on this glasses here so it will bring you back to your door close position i'll click on okay in order to run your analysis there are two ways you can click this and hit the green flag or you can go to edit definition and then run so before that we should add motors here i'm going to click on motors since we have only only one motor uh, it has already been added by default so it is going to run from start to end my start should be zero and my end to end should be three in case if you want to run the motor just for partial seconds like two seconds or 1.5 seconds you can mention it here if you have several motors like that you could just add it by clicking this icon so going to click ok coming to my mechanism tree and hitting the run so my analysis has run successfully so i'm going to run it again it is asking me whether i want to overwrite it yes i do so I want to run it again just to show. So this is how it runs. I'm going to click on drag components and double click on my snapshot to bring it to its own position. So this is how we run our mechanism. In case if you want to play back a video of this one, you could just go to playback and choose your analysis. Since we have only one analysis done in our uh, model tree right now, sorry, mechanism tree, we have just one. And you could just uh, go to this arrow here, click on play. You would just increase the speed. If you want to stop anywhere like uh, for example i want to see whether my door is going to 
hit the neighboring components of the enclosure or not. You could just stop the animation anywhere or what you can do is you could generate a file that represents the swept volume of this door. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm going to drag components and door closed. So since we already have a mechanism ran in our session, I'm going to go to playback again. And uh, last time we used this double arrow to play the model, sorry, to play the mechanism. So you could just use this option, which is called motion envelope. Click on this and I'm going to set a quality of eight. Since we have only a few components like a door and two hinges, so the quality can be set anywhere between six to eight. So I'm going to choose a quality of eight and uh, if you click on this arrow collector here, it will choose your uh, components. So I will choose my door, my rotating hinge and the bottom rotating hinge and that's it. So I don't want anything else. Okay, so my system has selected three components and then what you should do is you should keep the ignore skeletons and ignore quilts by default. But uh, since I have some uh, features that are presence of the pins in terms of surface, I'm not going to ignore quilts. Just ignore skeletons because I don't have any skeletons in my model. So I should generate this as a part file. The name can be door rotation underscore envelope. And uh, I could just click OK. It's creating an export. So as you can see at the bottom left corner of the screen, the door rotation envelope has been saved. So you should not click OK again because it will say it will generate another file. You should just cancel out of this, close it, and I'm going to go out of Creo right now. I'm sorry, uh, Creo mechanism right now. It is asking whether I should save my hinge rotation. No, I don't want to. So now go to Assemble option. Within this, if you type envelope E N V in the search bar, you will get door underscore rotation underscore envelope. So this file was previously generated by Creo and this is the one we just generated right now based on our custom name here. So this is our motion envelope right now. As you can see, this one here is generated as an output of the rotation of the door by 90 degrees. You don't have to worry how to assemble this. You just go to drop down default. So it will assemble itself. This is how it works. So you could enable transparency for this or you uh, you don't have to if you you know if you wish to so i have enabled transparency just to have an overlay between this door uh, assembly or this enclosure assembly and this motion envelope here you could use it to perform uh, clearance analysis in your design in case if you want to see whether it is hitting your uh, door or not here i can clearly see that it is not hitting it is having some clearance here so i could just uh, make sure that's so, okay i have some ample amount of clearance so i have a clearance of about 1.8 mm between my enclosure and the door while it's rotating. So I can make sure that uh, there is no negative interference in my model. So this is how you can utilize uh, Creo mechanism and motion envelope to perform various uh, design studies in your model. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. And in case if you want to replicate the same uh, mechanism that we just performed here, you could just go to the link that's uh, placed in the description of this video and uh, download the CAD models to try it out for yourself. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.